Guys, welcome to part three of this video series, exploring which parts and equipment are needed to build the ultimate Lexus GX470 off-roading and overlanding rig for under 20 grand. In the last two videos, which you should definitely check out, we covered items related mostly to off-road performance like suspension, armor, tires, and drivetrain upgrades like lockers and re-gearing. Today, we're gonna get into more overlanding preparedness that is, equipment designed to keep your off-road trip going without any setbacks, even if you get stuck or break something. As such, we're covering recovery equipment and spare parts you need with you before off-roading in your Lexus GX470 or other independent front suspension rig. Let's start out with recovery equipment. Recovery equipment is crucial for off-roading, as it allows you to safely get unstuck when your vehicle becomes bogged down in mud, sand, or other difficult terrain. Without proper equipment, you risk damaging your vehicle or becoming stranded by digging the tires in further, which can be dangerous in remote areas. Recovery equipment typically includes items like winches, straps, and shackles, which are designed to help pull your vehicle out of the sticky situation. By having the right equipment and knowing how to use it, you can minimize the risk of debilitating damage and keep yourself safe when exploring remote off-road terrain. Recovery straps are great for pulling people out of a stuck situation with the help of another vehicle. Winches are useful for self-recovery when there's no other vehicle around to help. Traction boards are great for getting a stuck vehicle moving again by providing additional traction under the tires. Each type of equipment has its own advantages and disadvantages, so it's important to choose the right tool for the right job based on the specific situation. And of course, it's important to have all these parts on hand, so let's dive a little deeper into each one. Choosing the right equipment for the situation when it comes to recovery is crucial when going off-road, including selecting the proper weight rating for recovery straps and the capacity of winches. It's also extremely important to have rated recovery points on the vehicle to ensure safe and effective recoveries. Using equipment that is not appropriate for the situation or using it on a vehicle that exceeds the weight capacity can lead to equipment failure, injury, and death. Always read and follow the manufacturer's guidelines and choose equipment that matches the weight and size of your vehicle. And just a side note you guys, these points on the vehicle that are just used to keep your vehicle tied down during transport from Japan to the US are not recovery points. These are not rated recovery points, so make sure you get something like this if you don't have a full recovery point front bumper setup. Again, rated recovery points are extremely crucial. Snatch recovery is a commonly used off-road technique that involves using a snatch strap or a kinetic rope to pull a stuck vehicle out of a situation. Snatch straps, also known as kinetic recovery ropes, are designed to stretch as much as 20% and use the stored kinetic energy from the recovery vehicle to pull the stuck vehicle out of the situation. If you have a winch, it's important to follow proper winching techniques to ensure that the winch and recovery equipment are used safely and effectively. The cable or rope should be extended to the anchor point using a tree strap or winch extension strap if necessary. Don't try to wrap that cable around a tree, for example, or any other recovery point. These are not designed to be wrapped around and then hooked into themselves. A winch rope dampener can also be a great safety measure to force the cable and other recovery components that are under tension during the recovery downward towards the ground in case of breakage which reduces the likelihood of damage or injury. It also works to warn others that a recovery is taking place, since the cable can be hard to see. Especially if you're trying to recover a vehicle from the other side of the trail, this is critical as people coming down the trail might not see the cable and run into it, which could be disastrous. And guys, just a quick note, if you are the anchor vehicle and you have a winch and you're pulling a vehicle out, don't use park in order to keep your vehicle stationary. Your parking pawl that keeps your vehicle locked into park position is is not an infinitely strong object. Okay, this thing can't handle the weight of a 10,000 pound winch pulling on it to get another vehicle out of a stuck situation. Rather, put your anchor vehicle in neutral, pull the handbrake, and put your foot on the brake. That way, if you inevitably move forward a little bit, like I actually ended up doing, you're not gonna damage your parking pole and potentially break it so you lose park in your transmission. All you'll do is kind of roll forward a little bit, and that just means you have to press the brake a little 
harder. Also, if you don't trust the anchor point that you're pulling from on the other vehicle, like for instance, this guy that I was able to recover didn't have a frame mounted hitch and I was a little bit worried about that. Instead, he had just one of those drop down hitches, which I know is pretty strong, but it's definitely not as strong as a frame mounted hitch. And I had both my kids sleeping in the back of the car. So what I did for just an extra measure of safety is I put the hood up so that if anything did happen and those chunks of metal became a projectile, it wouldn't go straight through the windshield or anything crazy like that. It would hit the hood and, and deflect down. Use your best judgment and err on the side of caution when doing any vehicle recoveries. A long tow strap can be used as a winch extension when the distance between the stuck vehicle and the anchor point is greater than the length of the winch cable. By attaching the tow strap to the end of the winch cable, then to the anchor point, the winch can be used to pull the vehicle out even when the cable isn't long enough. In the rare case that a vehicle needs to be towed off the trail, a long tow strap can also be used to connect two vehicles together. By maintaining a safe distance and slowly driving the tow vehicle, the stuck vehicle can be towed out of the trail and back to a safe location for towing to a repair shop. Next up, I want to talk about air compressors. This is one of the most critical components that every off-roader, especially overlander, needs to have on board. An air compressor is an essential piece of equipment for off-road driving, as it allows you to adjust tire pressure to the terrain you're driving on. Lowering tire pressure increases the tire's contact patch, improving traction on loose surfaces such as sand or mud, and hard surfaces like rocks or logs. Additionally, airing down the tires helps to absorb shock and reduce the chance of tire damage when driving over this rough terrain. It also makes the trail much more comfortable to drive on, since you have that extra dampening from the softer tires. It's as if the tires become an important part of the suspension system when aired down off-road. When it's time to leave the trail, an air compressor can be used to reinflate the tires to the appropriate pressure for on-road driving. This helps maintain tire life and fuel efficiency, and is essential for safe handling and stability on the road. Another benefit to having an air compressor for off-road driving is that it can help in the case of a puncture. If a tire gets punctured out on the trail, you can use the air compressor to fill the tire back up after plugging it, and potentially continue on driving without having to replace the tire with your spare. This can be especially important if you're in a remote area and don't have easy access to a tire repair shop, and you want to use a spare only if a plug or patch isn't sufficient, such as like a long sidewall gash. I also recommend having a recovery plan and practicing recovery techniques before hitting the trail. In addition to all this recovery gear and training, I recommend checking out the next section, spare parts. Off-roading can be a very demanding activity on your vehicle. You're more likely to experience breakages and other issues when you're off-road than when you're driving on paved roads. Here are a few key reasons carrying spare parts for your vehicle is a good idea. You could be stranded for hours or even days if you break down in the middle of nowhere. It could be a long time before you get help. Also, if you break down in a remote area, you could be in danger from wild animals or from the elements. Finally, if you need to have your vehicle towed to a mechanic, it can be expensive, and carrying these spare parts and having the tools and know-how to install them can help you avoid these costs. The types of spare parts you'll need will vary depending on the type of vehicle you're driving and the off-roading that you're doing. However, there are some common spare parts that most off-roaders should carry. These include the following. A spare tire is one of the most important spare parts to carry. If you get a flat while off-roading, you'll need to be able to change it quickly. If you've already upgraded to larger than stock tires above 32, to 33 inches, chances are you've discovered that the spare won't fit under the cargo area anymore where the stock spare goes, but you'll still need a spare. So figure out a solution that works for you. If that means strapping the wheel and tire down in your interior cargo area, so be it. If that means putting on the roof, so be it. If you want to go all out and get a proper tire carrier like I did from Restless Off-Road, I highly recommend it. Number one for the looks, but number two for the convenience and carrying capacity that it provides. Serpentine belt and extra air filters are some other spare parts you might want to have on hand. Your Toyota Lexus V8 can't run without the serpentine belt, so if you lose it, you're dead in the water. Air filters can get clogged with dust, so it's best to have a spare ready to go. In fact, as some of you may have noticed, when I go off-road, I have a dedicated off-road air filter that I use that I clean out with air pressure after every trip, and then I put in my dedicated on-road air filter so that it's not ingesting that dust during the 99% of the time when I'm driving on-road. 
I also recommend carrying some basic spare fluids, including a quart of engine oil and gear oil, brake and power steering fluid, and since you need water to survive, bring some extra for your vehicle in case you have a boil over event due to a cooling system issue. This could be caused by something as simple as a bad radiator cap, and as a side note, this is a common failure on the Lexus GX470, so make sure you also just replace that piece with a fresh OEM radiator cap if you don't know the last time it was changed, so you don't risk overheating in the first place. If it's some other kind of issue, like a bad fan clutch, having extra water on hand to refill the radiator after it fully cools down can lengthen the amount of time you can travel before turning the engine off and waiting for it to cool. If this does happen and you have to use that drinking water, make sure you get a full cooling system flush and coolant replacement done when you get back to civilization. Drinking water contains minerals that can leave deposits in the cooling system and cause long-term issues. And of course, to top all this off, I need to mention that tools and repair equipment are also extremely important to carry. This includes a tire repair kit, maybe a multi-tool, a socket and wrench kit, and throw in a first aid kit while you're at it. Having spare parts without the proper tools and install know-how is useless. That's why I recommend checking out videos on this channel and others for how to replace the common failure points on your vehicle so you aren't dead in the water if something breaks. Okay guys, that's all I have for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to check it out. We'll see you in the next video.